All right, what's up, y'all? Oh, welcome to the Muscle Hustle Podcast. I'm here by myself. Coco left me today, so I'm here with my guys. We're going to introduce each other from left to right. I'll let this one. Okay, all right. So, right. so, right. Right. so um, uh, yeah, TJ Tajani, uh, here in Houston, originally born in Nigeria, grew up right here in Houston. Uh, real estate investor, been in real estate since 2015, kind of been wholesaled. I've wholesaled, I've fixed and flipped, uh, long-term buy and hold. Started cutting my teeth pretty heavy in the Airbnb space in 2017. And now we dabble into the hotel space and the boutique hotel space. And now we're actually getting to development as well. So we're working on our first uh, uh, commercial development as well. And uh, a few other things that we're, that we're tapping in on. So I'm excited. Best. My name is Cameron Jackson. I'm from originally from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I currently live in Houston, Texas. I'm a commercial real estate investor and residential real estate de developer and investor. Um, I've done a dip couple different things where in Louisiana, I opened up the first shipping container park. Um, and now I've really just gotten to a lot of single family and multifamily deals. And um, social media has become huge as well. So I'm using that to leverage um, just different investments, networking and different things like that. So um, that's, that's what I got. That's what's up. Yeah, hello. My name is Gregory Thomas, the second from Marshall, Texas, uh, Northeast Texas. Been in Houston since 2006. Uh, been a real estate investor, developer, uh, former agent, uh, real estate agent, uh, and now I'm in the commercial space. Been in the commercial space for horizontal and vertical development for like the last two, three years, uh, and that's pretty much you know what I do. Yeah, so uh, I'm Oge Wadu, better yet known as Money Wadu. I've uh, been in real estate, shoot, since 2014 or so. Um, used to be an engineer, but now I pretty much do this full time as far as like fixing and flipping. I'm also a mortgage lender, so if anybody needs a house, holla at your boy. Uh, and then uh, pretty much, yeah, just a lot of things in, within real estate I've just been able to do, whether it's short term rentals mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, buying properties out of state or buying properties via uh, auction. Uh, been through a lot of trials and tribulations within real estate. So real estate's that one one industry where, you know, you can make a lot of mistakes, but make mm. a lot of money at the same time. So. Bet, bet, bet. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. So what got y'all into real estate? Oh, man. Hey, you want to take this one first? Yeah. Uh, so so I, background, my background is an engineer as well. So I graduated with a mechanical engineering degree from U of H okay. and uh, did that. And I, it was tough because I had to put myself through school. And so one, when I graduated, one of my one of my boys, he literally handed me a book and he said, bro, I watch you hustle in school. You need to read this book. And you can probably guess what book that is. It's Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, and so uh, awesome. at the time I was working offshore, I was an engineer working out in the field at, uh, out in the Gulf of Mexico. I was what you consider a subsea installations engineer. So right at the face of the oil and gas economy, all the equipment that is used to um, build and produce crude oils and hydrocarbons subsea. I fabricated them. I installed them subsea. So I went offshore quite a bit, but it came at a cost. And I was gone all the time, like 60, 70 percent of the year I was offshore. And uh, I took that book with me offshore on a three week hitch and I read it twice. And that was a light bulb moment for me. I was like, man, I need to get off this boat, this rig ASAP. <laughs> I need to go buy some assets right now. And so that's what turned me on to real estate. And it's been literally I started wholesaling. Um, I started learning how to how to wholesale a member of YouTube University. I started Googling a bunch of stuff and and I was I would work offshore. And you can imagine working offshore, your your phone time, your internet time is quite limited. And so sometimes you don't have much internet at all to even call home. And you literally have to kind of stand in line almost like a pay phone to call home as people will be in line calling home and I'll be in line trying to call sellers <laughs> to convince them to sell me their property. And so uh, that's how I kind of got into real estate, man. It's been real estate ever since. Okay, bet, bet, bet. Cam. Very interesting. Um, so for me, I got into it um, in college. So I was in college at the time. I had a clothing brand and I was just wasting my money. I was playing football at this time at Coast Carolina and just wasting my money, just bullshitting a lot. And uh, my mom was like, you need to start worrying about your future and thinking about what you're going to do. And um, she always did real estate, but I never really paid attention to it. And so she was like, let's go in on your first property. Let's house hack it. And then um, I'll show you basically the ropes. So I went in with her on that first property and I started to see like that income coming in after I put in like little bit of work and I was like damn this is dope like mm. I really fell in love with it so I'm still playing football at the time my grandpa ended up giving me land in Baton Rouge Louisiana right downtown um, near LSU and there was a guy that had a snowball stand on it so now I'm his new landlord but my grandpa was never really on him on top of him about payments and things like that so I'm in college 
that three hundred fifty dollars I was getting, I need that. I'm in college. I'm like, I'm on his neck. Like by the fifth time, fifth, the fifth come, he not no payment. I'm on his neck. About three hundred and fifty. Three fifty. Three fifty. Let's snowball that ain't thing, a long right? Way. Right. Yeah. A long way. So it taught me like, I really saw okay, like the ownership, and I ended up evict, evicting him. So like once I went through that whole process and like figuring out okay, now I need to get this land to produce me more income, and then that's when I really got the idea of to create the shipping container park. And then I dropped out of school literally like a couple weeks after because I had to pay for a summer class. My dad was like, that sounds like a shipping container. I was like, you know what? I'm about to be done with this. So I just left school, moved to Louisiana, and then started developing that. And then that's kind of really how I got into the space. And then from there, I was taking those profits and basically buying adjudicated properties, foreclosures, uh, single families, and then you know doing a couple flips, new builds, just trying to like really find my way. And then um, I really just landed on buying properties, fixing them up, and then renting them out. So that's kind of how I really got into it. And now that's what I do more of long term. Uh, nice. nice. <clears throat> Great story. I feel like I'm probably the oldest here in the group. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I um, I started real estate back in like 2005 in the heyday when wholesaling wasn't even called wholesaling. You know, they had a market where you could state your income, you know what I mean, based on your credit. And so my cousin, they called me from Houston when I was in college. He was like, hey, man, we need to use your credit if it's good, like what's your credit? I'm a country boy, we just write checks and you know what I mean, <laughs> for paying bills and try to balance your checkbook. And so I'm just like, all right, you know, credit score, probably six something, thinking low sixes, you know, people don't care about credit, you know, back in the day, like I said, college. So he ended up pulling, it was like 680. 680 was enough to get <clears throat> get you a loan, state of mm-hmm. And so we had a, a group of people that, I guess already had the properties lined up, you know what I mean? So they already had the comps on it. And we just ran the play like that. You can state your income. Like I said, I make a hundred thousand. You can state your documentation. Mm-hmm. You know, when you fast forward and look at it now in hindsight, you know, that's <laughs> nah. <laughs> 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 for 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 camera purposes, we're not gonna ever right, 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 right. but yeah. I'm just saying like dang, like, okay, we can make, you know what I mean, ten, twenty thousand a month. That sounds like good money, you know what I mean, when you're in college. So we ran that play a couple of times and uh I moved to Houston two thousand six after I graduated. And once I graduated, I came here and was working a corporate job, you know, still in the corporate sector. The market was crashing. And My so boy, are you market. telling you was a banker, man? Yeah, I was mm-hmm. a banker. I used to work for Wamu, you know what I mean, which is one of the banks that crashed. And yeah. Chase. And, uh, and Chase. And, uh, he gave my first business account. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so my walk of life, you know, even through real estate and fast forwarding to the day, you know, having corporate jobs, it's always, you know, I've always kind of had a knack for it. Like I've always just been immersed in the space, being an agent, selling homes, and being an agent before it became a thing where you see now everybody yep, is right. a real estate agent. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like everybody gets a, a real estate license, but I had a license like right when it was, you know, back to pop in 2012. And so once I did that, I still worked a part time job. And after I got let go from the job after a few years, I'm like, I'm going to just take it full time. Like so 2015, I ended up, you know, buying a crib with a line of credit, uh, flipping that house over in South Union, 77021 area. And then it just kind of took off from there. So I started flipping property after property with my own money using cash. And then I never was a hard money person, but I understood how hard money could, you know, be beneficial because you're not having to use all of your capital at one time. And so I'm like, man, if I could scale on rehabs, let me see what I can do on new construction. But the thing people don't tell you, and I didn't have any mentors in that space is that New construction takes, takes a lot longer mm-hmm. than the rehab. You know what I mean? Especially when you're dealing with the city of Houston. Permit, right. permit department, you know what I mean? Crazy. Traffic right away, urban forestry. There, There's some things that you just don't know, you know what I mean, in real estate uh, that you're going to have to encounter outside of just building the structure. Exactly. So I started dealing with that, you know, in different capacities and, and uh, moved over to Field Ward. So I started doing the Field Ward area in 2020 where uh, I did a couple of properties over there. They made out pretty good. And then I've been circulating in the area ever since. So I got like three more properties that I'm closing out uh, on the residential, you know, side. And and then I'm just strictly focused on commercial, you know, development. But just all in all, I mean, just hopping into that industry and being able to know about banking one on one, being able to being able to know about being a realtor and how to buy sell process goes, and then just being an ultimate, you know, creative of, you know, construction and, and knowing what looks good, doing my own designs handing it over to the to the architect so he can put it in CAD and then having the engin- engineer do the silver aspect. It's like, you got the perfect picture, you think. And so the obstacles going up and down, man, is what made me as far as in this real estate industry. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 
you know, 100%. the experiences. No, it's definitely, definitely with the experience. And so uh, I'm glad to be able to, you know, reach back to people and tell them what to look for and what not, look, you know, what not to look for. And so it, some people will probably put a price tag on it, but man, a lot of that stuff, man, you just pass on the game. Hopefully somebody passes it, you know, tenfold. So that's my in a rundown, <laughs> you know, in 15 year experience with, with real estate. So, awesome. yeah. so. Uh, with me, i uh, always been big on just ownership and just in general. So when I bought my first house, I uh, bought it. I was working out of West Texas. So I just got, I just graduated from ETSA, uh, electrical engineering degree. And uh, I was work, working at a buildings material company. So the people that make sheet rocks or wall, wall board, uh, I was working at the company out there. And so I'm in a small ass town, 10,000 people. Um, I was renting. I think my rent was like 700 bucks a month, something like that. And... Uh, I was like, I think by the time my lease was coming up, I was like, man, I might as well just buy a house. But I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about buying a house. I didn't have any mentors or anything like that. So I, I literally looked up on Craigslist, saw a house going for, it was recently renovated, going for like 65000 And so I hit him up. I was like, hey, I'm looking to buy. I'll buy it for like 60000 60, I don't know what I'm going to go. I'm just saying the number that seems right. I don't know, know nothing about nothing. And so we agreed at 60000 uh, 60, So um, went to the bank, Bank of America, uh, got me got me a loan. And so when they did the appraisal, the appraisal came back at fifty eight five. And so I went back to the sales. Like, oh, I'm not coming off the difference. Like, we have to settle on this number. So we ended up settling at fifty eight five. So that even helped me right. save a little bit more money on uh, on top of that. And I think back then interest rates were like three in the threes, low threes or something like that. Right. So I got the house for cheap. I think my mortgage was like five, 500 <laughs> bucks a month, you know? <laughs> and so that's kind of like my first encounter within like real estate. And um, during that time frame, I, you know, I was on bigger pockets and stuff too. So I was just like, I didn't know it was called wholesaling until much later, but like the whole process of wholesaling, like I was trying to learn that, trying to test it. I never truly wholesaled a deal, but you know, I was speaking to different people and the deals that I was trying to have fell through. Um, but yeah, that, and then I want to say three months later, I got a job back out here uh, at the refinery in Texas city. And so um, one of my managers, his wife was a property manager, a realtor. She could connect me with a property manager and from there, I think I was getting rent for like eight hundred bucks a month, and that's that's my first Damn. instance of cash flow. Understanding that you don't have to be at the spot, and you can still make yeah, money off. Very good. Thing. So yeah. I had that house for like eight years, never <laughs> been back since then, and and made a lot of money. I sold it recently, or after COVID, so everything was was high. So it made sense. So, yeah. Uh, so that's that's pretty much how I started, and then like I said, every pretty much every year since then, I either. Uh, purchased a home to live in and rented it out, or purchased a home to kind of like fix up, and 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 then rent out. So I think my first project I fixed up, it was crazy. Found the dude on link. Like, so again, I, I used to work at a refinery, so every day I would see this old motel driving by, and, and you know driving by, it, and it was like the location of it. It just to, in my head, I was like, why is no one having this running? Because right. like. In a refinery, there's things called tar turnarounds, and so that means like people are working like 12 hour shifts 100%. for a long, long period of time. So yeah. if you're closer to refinery, you need to be closer to refinery, right. you know. And so if you just rent that out, you're gonna be that's a money making yeah. machine. So I'm, I look up who owns the property. Come to find out, the dude, um, he graduated from UTSA as well. So I reached out to him on LinkedIn. I was like, "Oh yeah, fellow real runner, blah blah blah. I'm trying to buy your property." He was like, "Well, this one I can't." I'm not selling, but I have these other two properties, and so that's how I was able to get my first mm -hmm. property to to fix up through that. Bought that thing for like fifty thousand dollars in Lamarck, okay. um, and and that was my first process of understanding how contractors suck. <laughs> you know, yeah. I lost Horrible. a lot of money with that stuff. I but I, I sued them, and so um, yeah, just that process going all the way through. You know, okay. pulling money to buy properties as well with other people that would have never purchased property. Uh, bought a house out of Memphis. That one went pretty well. Um, and then from there, just kind of like going into full time, right? Buying a house uh, specifically to fix it up and then sell it afterwards. So that's what's um, up. That's, that's what's sure, up. Sure. So being in the real estate uh, field <clears throat> and flipping homes, I know it's some, I say nightmare stories. So like me, my first flip, uh, thirty days, my contractor was like, "Yeah, well, I can flip it in thirty days." I actually got, it. I got the house for sixty. <laughs> Ended up uh, flipping it. I put uh, thirty. What I put it now, thirty to redo it. Um, 
he literally got done in 30 days. But um, the mishap was the day we was for the close, someone stole the air conditioning. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? They stole the whole AC condenser. Yeah. So I had to go back and do that. After that happened, we had that freeze. Mm. Pipes busting this <laughs> So I'm like, what? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, dog, do I still want to do this? You know what I mean? But um, that was my that was one of my hell stories with uh, one of my flips. So what about you guys? What I know you have. <laughs> <laughs> like it was interesting. Everybody. You know, it was interesting. Um, I don't know if you remember, there was a time when you earlier, it was in 2018, actually. You came oh, to yeah. one of my flips in the Bel Air area. That actually ended up being one of my worst real estate deal that I've ever done. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, and this this is the property that that flooded during Harvey, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, five hundred year flood, first time first time it ever flooded in the Bel Air neighborhood. And the benefit for us is that this particular property was a one story house amongst uh, houses that were torn down and built two stories. Like these okay. two story homes that were brand new were going for 1.5, 1.2, 1.6. And so there weren't that many one story houses in that neighborhood to where you could still be zoned to Bel Air High School and still be in that neighborhood for under 700,000 mm-hmm. and 750,000. So we had that going for us uh, to rehab one of the fewer one story houses. Now um, on paper, we got the appraisal done. Everything looks great. We bought the property for 495. This is my first kind of higher end flip i hadn't done a flip at this at this price point before and purchase at 495 we're supposed to put 90k into the remodel this thing's supposed to sell for 711 was the it was the um appraisal when it came back we're going to list it for 695 700k um this property talking about bad contract is the very first contract that i hired literally phase one 15 bands to start the start the project never heard from him again walked yeah. <laughs> just that's that's just that's just how we started the project let's just pop it off <laughs> let's go ahead and enter right, the, right. Into the project that way and so um project ended up we rehabbed it took us uh well we anticipated about four months for the rehab took us six which wasn't too too bad um but we ended up this property sat for two years and we we're in a 12 percent interest hard money loan forty seven hundred dollars a month Boy. paying um at the time thank god for my short-term rental business that was cash flow and nasty two years Two, two, almost two years. It said, <laughs> almost two years. It, it registered. Okay. It registered. Oh, oh and then, and then, then on top of that, guess how much we sold it for? Five thirty-seven. I had to come to the closing table with twelve grand. You lost just, just to, just to get it sold. I had to come to the closing table with additional twelve grand. So, all, in my mind, when I run the numbers in my head, I probably lost north of one hundred fifty, one hundred eighty k of my own money, and. Uh, but if I really put it on paper, it's probably over 200K if I would really look at it. Now, here's the thing. My biggest mistake wasn't buying it. My biggest mistake was not finding a way to hold on to it. Because we ended up, I ended up getting rid of it, getting it at the tail end of 2019. I bought it, I closed on it December 2017. Um, ended up closing it in 2019. Then the property values shot up 2021. If I had held, found a way to hold on to it, I would have sold it for over 850. And so, and so when they talk about buy real estate and wait, there's a reason why. And also, <laughs> you also have to understand, um, you can you can run numbers and things can look, things can look away. So because trust me, if it didn't look buttoned up, we wouldn't we wouldn't ran to play. But um, and you also have to understand, buyers at that price point were quite different at mm-hmm. that price point. I'm talking about people coming to the house. Oh my God, I love it. <sighs> hate that window i like i hate the handle on that window i'm out of here and like oh i love it i don't like that tree i'm out of here like they're so picky <laughs> like, i'll get rid of the tree don't worry mm-hmm. like we we kept like this this it had like this nice classical old school windows that almost you had to spool out mm-hmm. we made everything super modern but kept like that old artistic vibe with the windows people came in there oh my god either you they loved it or they hated it and so we ended up just after we listed it, going back, tearing out all the windows and oh, putting sure. brand new windows in. Right, right. So, the crank windows. I mean, right, yeah. the crank. Yeah, exactly. That, so that, that still gives like a you know nice aesthetic too. It does. It does. Man, you know, for a person that likes that. For a person that likes that, I mean, and if they if they hate it, they 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 don't want to fool no, with it, right? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that was probably definitely probably the biggest L I've taken in real estate. Uh, but man, I mean, you know, one of the things that I that I appreciate about my journey is the fact that we stayed in the game. And a lot of things that has happened were probably put out about 90 percent of people that had that, that was embarking on this journey. But staying in the game is really the true win. Uh, you either you either let your failure sit on top and you say, what was me? Or you stand on top of it and figure out a way to to, to triumph. And so um, staying in the game, then when we start running up the short term rental bag up and and uh, and so, yeah, yeah. 
Me and the piggyback off of that, man. And I tell a lot of people, like, don't believe everything that you see. 100%. We live in a instant gratification society. That's what people, they see right. what they see in anything. Hey, I can go out and do this. Yeah. But a lot of people aren't being transparent about the true numbers. It's like you said that you spent 200 out of pocket. Yeah, I'm just saying, assuming that's part of the debt service, yep. plus whatever you spend yep. in the pocket for the loss. Yep. People not doing bottom line numbers. Like when yep. you look at the numbers, and even though the HUD says you made ninety thousand, you you really in the red. You operate yeah. in the red. If you spent two hundred, then you really lost one hundred and ten thousand. Mm -hmm. You yep. see what I'm saying? Even if the ninety came back to you, you still lost one hundred and ten thousand. So, you know, we got to be careful about the stuff that we put out there and promote if it's not. You know, 100%. I mean, we're not giving the full, you know what I mean, detail and transparency, transparency to people that want to jump in the industry and say, hey, you know, you can make this type of money, but make sure you count every dollar. Because every, every everybody want to flip and everybody do real flip. estate, exactly. don't know the back end to it. You don't yeah. know you need money. Right. You, you, don't right. Need right. Right. you need that right. money that you think you need and right. money behind that. You right. know what I mean? Behind that. And that's the crazy thing. It's like, man, that money in between the debt service, the permits, the... You know what I mean? The death. Death scene, I the death. Right. Man, and we talk about experiences like, man, I, I, when he was just saying, I was like, man, I, I got so many. I know you got so many. You know, I was over in Field War, so people see new money coming over. They're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we finna we get that. 100%. Yeah, we got them. You know yeah. what I mean? We finna take I got water hoses. Yeah, we're gonna take water hoses. We're gonna take. I went to one of his properties. He got it secure, like. Yeah. Fort Knox. I was like, what? Oh, man, you don't know what? who we at. I've been to a few. Yeah. <laughs> I, got a dude, too. I got a dude pressing me right now about putting the HVAC on, but I got to get my guy to make the cage. And he's like, hey, man, I need to come put this HVAC up. Hey, man, I don't need it to get stolen. Right. You mm -hmm. worried about, you know what mm -hmm. I mean, bottom line, which I get it, but give me some time. I said, I could buy it. You could put it in my, you know, my garage. He really wants to land it to go ahead and close it out. I'm like, right now, I've seen some houses across the street. They ran through it literally mm -hmm. like a shotgun house. <laughs> they've stole everything from the windows to the doors to the toilets to the copper. I'm talking about like they've have, they've gone crazy on these properties. So yep, we talk too. about spending money, man. Like I I, man, I, don't, I I put that in the back of my in my mental, man. Throw the whole back. house away. Huh? Yeah, the whole yeah. house away. Yeah. Even yeah. for our house, man, I spent like um um one of the guys that did the concrete was supposed to do the, the concrete. He took the down payment, 25000 Found out when I didn't hear from him a few days later, he he had to bond him and his brother out of jail. So he spent my 25000 which was the deposit. Now y'all got to bond me out. <laughs> now you're right. Because <laughs> you I'm going ham. I'm still chasing him. You know what I mean? I'm still chasing I'm like, hey, bro, you don't, okay, you speak no English? <laughs> We're going to translate. Damn. <laughs> what about you, man? Uh, so since he gave a building story, I'll talk about like a tenant nightmare, right? Because... A lot of oh, people don't understand that too because mm -hmm. tenants are like really the worst part of it sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. You get everything right, you get the property, you know, ready to go and you find a tenant and they move in and then they just like completely trash your house. So I've actually have two stories, but I'll tell the one that most recently just happened. So uh, this is a property I have over on Cullen. Um, it's a three mm -hmm. bedroom house and I had a tenant in there. Um, my mom was actually the one that got the property and then um, let me um, have ownership of it. And so we had a tenant in there for about eight years, this old white couple. They smoked cigs a ton, um, but they ended up dying in the house, right? So going in, all the cigars they smoked over all those years, I had to get all of that fixed. And they also didn't have any family. So we had to clear out everything. That like must, everything they had. Like I'm talking, it was crazy, and, uh, like a casino. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like a, it was crazy, right? Like the smoke on the walls, like it was insane. So we had to clear it out. And after having that great tenant, um, I rent it out again. I fix it up so that I do the roof, I do the siding, new windows, new new fixtures. Really, just do it nice, like almost like a flip. And uh, I'm excited to get a new tenant in there, and have a tenant that, that kind of like a red flag. But I ended up, I got on the phone with her, and I let my emotions get into it. And you never want to do that with real estate. I feel like shit with business, right? With business, <laughs> anything, right? And I was like, you know what? She needed a place, but it's all, anybody that needs to move in somewhere quick is always a red flag. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I didn't. She did the background check. Everything was looking good. Credit was good, but she had like a questionable rental history. And I ended up, you know, I was like, you know what? You can move in. So let her move in. Uh, some time passes, and I need to go fix something at the house. So I go in the house, and I. It looks like a trap house, like the way they have it inside. Like there's like one couch in the living room, like a TV, but there's like nothing else. Like there's just like roaches everywhere. They got this big old black dude sleeping on the couch with an ankle monitor on. I'm like, 
in there cleaning and fixing stuff up, like fixing up the kitchen, and he's not even waking up. Like he's in a deep sleep. So I'm in there like something's going on in here, right? On them perks. Um, they ended up <laughs> not paying rent for a couple months. So I'm like a good landlord, so I was like trying to work with her. Um, and so after like three months, I was like, look, I gotta evict you. So I ended up evicting the lady. And at this point, I'm out like maybe like six, seven thousand. I end up evicting her. And soon as I evict them and the day they're supposed to leave, I go there and they busted out all the windows. They took the stove. They took the microwave. They took the fridge. Um, just like you were saying, anything of value there, they took it all. They like flooded the house. They knocked holes in the wall and put like beer cans in them. They just tr completely trashed the house, right? So I ended up getting it fixed and I was like, all right, well, you know, that's on me. I took the L. I was like, whatever. I get all the windows fixed. I get the house fixed. They come back after I fix everything and, and trash it again, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and I took the L on it because I'm like, at the insurance, if it's not over a certain amount, they're not going to take care of it anyway. But I say, I have to say, it's just like picking the right tenant yeah. is such a key process. And like, you want to make sure like you're checking, checking their Instagram, you're checking their Facebook, you're calling their old landlords, you're, you you're, you're calling their, you're calling their sister. Like, you got to really investigate these people that you're going to put in these homes because even though I was out that three months of rent, I ended up losing like even like 15, 16,000 just because of that. Yeah. Um, and I'm at the point now where this happened, like this was a couple months ago. So I even still have the house boarded up right now, fixed everything on it, but I really wanted to like wait and give it time because a tenant like this, that's why I kind of like going section eight route sometimes or getting, like he was saying, purchasing a property that costs more so you can deal with better people. Yeah. Um, because this instance, I can't do anything about it. Like, I mean, I'm gonna but it's the area money. too, though. It's the area too yeah. that I have the property in, and that's on me. And I understand that, you know, the people that I'm dealing with at the same time. And um, I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't sue them. I would have spend more money suing them. Mm -hmm. They don't have any property, so I can't go. They allow them to have one car, so you can't go repo the car. Um, they don't have a house that you can take. Like, there's literally nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. And so that's why sometimes I like programs because at least you have somebody that has something to lose. A lot of times, mm -hmm. if you don't have, they don't have anything to lose. They're just gonna. You know, well, sometimes you got to take the law to your own hands. And you brother. do, and, you know, but, but the bad thing about that is they know my, my Instagram, my social media. Bro. So like they were watching me on my social media and like knew when I fixed the house, when it messed it up. Oh. And then like, oh, yeah. also it's like, I try to be a good person too. So it was like, I really didn't want that. You ever heard that turn and nice guy always lose? It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah, we we working some things out. Okay. We working yeah, some yeah, things yeah. out for that. But uh, that ain't take your feelings out of this. Yeah. You, you got to take your feelings out. Something yeah. important though, like anybody that's trying to move quick, red flag. Red flag. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had them. I've had those experiences, mm -hmm. man. Like, yeah, you know, man, they're selling the house, and I got to be out. You know, my thirty days mm -hmm. up. And a lot of times, they overnight movers, overnight yep. movers, overnight movers. Bro, and they do that too because. When you evict somebody and like you go, it takes a little second to get on their record. So they can try to hurry up and go jump oh, into another yeah. spot mm -hmm. and then they'll be good. And a lot of times now, even it's getting bad where a good thing we live in Texas because if we weren't in a landlord friendly state, like we were in Cali, they're teaching people how to squat now. Yeah. They have courses that these people can take yeah. to learn how to squat. So they'll yeah. come in your property and they'll they'll squat and now they in there for the, the rest of the year, paying yeah. no rent, doing nothing, trashing your apartment. You can't do nothing to and, them at all. And yeah, it's a big issue. It is right. something you can do. <laughs> there is something you can do. But the choice is yours. What's, what's the what's right. the app or the application where they allow you to pre screen? Uh I think I use it a few times. I can't think of it. I know and what you're they, talking they about. Like, they'll tell you like good renter, yep, bad yep, renter. Yep. I think that's flawed too, man. Yep. Like I use that. They say, Oh yeah, you can rent to them. And then, you know, you end up renting to them. Trash. Again, trash. Mm. A bubble dub, man. Trash. <laughs> tenants can be a, tenants can be a, a downfall, but they you know, can, you gotta screen them, you gotta have a process. I, I, I hate them, I, I'm mm. not gonna lie, bro. I just, it gives me a, a eerie feeling not to know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Then like, you wanna you put know, cameras in your spot and invade right. their privacy. You don't know what they're doing at the house. Right. Like, you don't know, right. like you said, it looked like a trap house. You don't know if they really were cooking crack in the kitchen. Like, right. you don't know, so it's just like, I'm still held liable for mm -hmm. anything that happens anything. over there. Yep. And if you don't, have, if you're renting from me nine times out of ten, you're not gonna have the money to mm -hmm. replace it. Yeah. Like you said, yep. if I try to sue you, what am I suing? You can't do nothing. You know I mean, you can't file a summary judgment on nothing, nothing from nothing leaves mm -hmm. nothing. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's just, it's, it's, it's bad, bro. It's bad. So what's your bad experience, man? I just told you. <laughs> that you got they were trying to, man, I got, man. I yeah, we didn't call. We didn't talk on the yeah, phone man, a couple I, of times. Hey, so man, long. pull up, man. Pull up, man. <laughs> man. I just been doing this for so long. That's why I was just telling you I, I'm burnt out on it, man. It's just yeah. like I had, I've had every experience, man. Mm -hmm. Like I, 
Yeah. I'm seeing them on camera. Like the yeah. robbers, they don't care. They don't wave at you in the camera. Because <laughs> by the time you set the alarm and call the police, we know the police not showing up until an hour later. Right. After that, they done took five, six thousand worth of inventory mm -hmm. and they lit it. I'm looking at them on camera, put the hey, two by fours over the fence. Stop. They're putting the two by fours over the fence, putting yeah. Hardy over the fence. I'm like, you can't do nothing about it either. Can't do nothing about it. Man, I done had to, I've had to hire people to like sit there overnight, paying them a hundred, you know what I mean, a hundred and twenty dollars a night. And then as soon as they leave, boom, boom they're kicking in the side. They're going to look at the cameras like, if it's a crackhead or just a straight up thief, like they're literally, they will outsmart in the head, you. Like, they will outsmart you. Like they've already <laughs> peeped the camera. They're professionals. They know exactly, yeah, they know exactly like, how they're going to look at the camera. Yeah, they're going to look at the camera. <laughs> or do this right here on that. They come, yeah. man, they've broken in any possible way, like through the side, hopped the fence, knocked off pickets. I mean, it's. it's and they're quick, it, yeah. in and out. They're quick. Right. And I like how you said earlier about like how people get the information from social media and they see it and they like mm -hmm. think that getting into real estate is easy. You don't need no money and these things. But like that's why like with mine, I like to show these right. things that happen. Yeah. Like, look, man, this shit's good, but this is going to happen yeah. to you. Like no, this could sure. have happen to you for sure. No, for people sure. People always going to happen. It's right. Gonna it's going to happen. happen. I say like right. showing hoods and all that. Yeah, that's cool. But you got to tell them the bad side. Right, right, right. I, I think saying, the yeah. best thing for a first timer or you want to get into it is to get with somebody like you guys, mm -hmm. right. you know, cause it's always people, hey, yo, you know, put down a percentage and you know, y'all do the flip together or something, somebody you trust so though, Cause it's yeah. a lot, it's a lot of people out here scamming you gotta be and taking people, too, yeah. Money, like, Take, yeah. Cause they don't, an investor just, they're an investor. Like they don't understand mm -hmm. the process. They don't mm -hmm. care about the right. mm -hmm. plans for nine months, mm -hmm. right. nine months. They're like, hey, you said we were going to be done in 69 mm -hmm. months. It's like, damn, yeah, like, you got to understand that. But here is the risk. And I tell anybody, when you get in real estate or any investment, it's an investment. There's going to be a 50 50 ball, regardless. You could win big or you could lose big. If you win big, cool. It's, it's, it's okay. champagne bottles, we popping bottles. But when you lose big, who's going to really take accountability? You know what I mean? Say, right. hey, we took the loss. Because you can do all the preventative measures, take all the preventative measures to make sure that you did what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But monetarily, like, man, it's like, hey, I, for me, and the relationship that we have, even if this deal went bad, I'm still try to make sure I get you. Right, right, right. That's just me just standing. No, that's one. No one thing about him. We, he didn't hit me about. Hey, I got the deal over here in Fifth Ward. Put this down. Blah blah blah. blah this that, and the other. But, but <laughs> this right here, my man, it may take six months. May take. Ah, <laughs> uh, and I'm hit him with man. I could go buy a brick and <laughs> get that bitch back know, in a man. couple of days. What are you talking about? Yeah, but it's but, like, you just got to be leery about it. Yeah, yeah, so. People that you take money from. Right, yeah, because right. right. there's a lot of people that they need, need money. They need money. It's like a person that needs money. You don't want to do business with them. Desperate. Yeah. Hey, it's finished yet? It's done yeah. yet? Yeah. It's done yeah. yet? Yeah. Hey, well, I rolled by there. Why they don't got the windows up? Uh, yeah. They got a dude that just scammed like 11 million um, out of that fund. I don't know if y'all saw that. Oh, mm -hmm. Jay, Jay Morrison. I think I think that's his yeah. name. Yeah, man, I, you know, I'll tell you about it. Yeah, bro, I, I was telling bro when yep. he was on the block, having people come see. I'm like, first of all, you got people on the block sweating out their shirts. You know what I mean? Go <laughs> take them to eat on their dime. <laughs> like, come on, man, that's yeah. that's, that's nasty. He just some people. That's nasty. Why? Yeah, he, that's he, insane. And he bought the crib. He bought oh, the crib. I think yep. he bought like that crib on all the acres. Yep. And, yep. You know what I mean? Now the mm -hmm. SEC is getting involved because. You took, you know, I mean, those funds and you commingled them. You spent it on this building and think somebody else was buying a building that it had to. Yeah. But just got to be careful, man. Be how careful who you invest with. Yeah. How to use them. I think I've came to TJ's property and you had like, mm -hmm. a, you may have had like a private investor at the mm -hmm. time. Uh, the one that was over there off of Liberty, I think. Uh, in the tray? Or, oh, no, uh, off of, um, off of um, Lions. Off of Lions. Yeah, yeah off of Lions. That was, that was a nice property. And I was just like, man, how you... You know how you going about? It's like I got a private investor, X Y Z. You know, what I mean, this mm -hmm. is what a return. But you gotta, you had to have that relationship. Gotcha. Whatever your relationship is and the communication that's mm -hmm. big. Like a person that feels like they can't trust you because you're not communicating with them, that's gonna be the person that will pound you down. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it's just like you gotta be careful with anybody that you that you deal with. You know, what I mean, in business or like I said, taking any or exchanges. Hundred percent. So what about your hell story, man? Uh, I mean. <laughs> I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it on a lighter end. I'm going to just say more so due to uh, market shift. Like okay. on my first like true flip, like I did the full blown renovation, like the house that was there, like existing. I pretty much tore that thing down to the studs and then added everything brand new. And so um, 
again, this is that's probably, a good feeling though, right? Oh, when oh you man, see it, you see when it, you see it at the end. Like, man, yeah, you see the just the stuff. You walk in, it's like I think through. I showed him my first one, man. I was just like, man, I want to move in here. <laughs> no, you, you know, I don't want to live in the neighborhood, but it's like <laughs> I just switch the shower yeah. up. I just a hundred percent. So yeah. yeah, so this is my first because it's an addition. Like I had to get new plans. Yeah. Permits. This is my first time dealing with the city of Houston in regards to permits. Yeah. So you know, this is my first time using a hard money loan. Mm. <laughs> so just to get plans and permits approved, that took up the whole mm-hmm. six months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And then so you know, you're doing the extension. I think the hard money lender I used was like three months extensions at a time. Um. So I'm already down and out like in the beginning because I'm waiting for this this time frame. You got I got squatters coming like in. Um, you know, staying there and all this other stuff. I have to call, please get them out, but they still keep going back and forth, back and forth, whatever. Um, and then once once I finally got the permits approved and I could start, you know, everything in a sense went went fine. But by the time I was done, the market now went from four percent interest rate to six, <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven. Big shoe. And so, like the market of buyers that I was looking for they're not they're not there like they're they're looking at other houses where whether it has like maybe a garage or whatever the case is um they don't they don't trust the area just yet because i this was actually in east downtown like it's right next to east river nine you know all this other stuff like people in houston you would think that if you has any kind of foresight if you get this house it's going to be like the heights right like you go make you go to make your money back no problem but it's almost like you need someone from out of town that don't really understand. Maybe someone from California and be like, "Oh, yeah, I mean, this looks nice. It's a great property. Um, the area." Because I always say, if the city is putting money where you at, then it's it's got the valuation is yeah. coming. It's right. It's right behind. 100%, yeah. But you know, a lot of people just don't just don't see that uh, see that vision. So that property, I went over budget a lot. So how I'm pricing the property is kind of like on the higher end too versus what I, I initially calculated my after repair value to be. And so, um, again, I mean, I think I went over budget probably 40000 and then that's not even coupled in with all my holding all costs. Call, and right, and right. Holding costs are just as bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then I couldn't sell it for all I wanted, so I had to go ahead and mm-hmm. refinance. And luckily, I was able to refinance at, at a decent rate, but I'm refinancing that damn near, shoot, <laughs> what's, my, what's my rate right now? Like eight, <laughs> or no, sorry, nine, 10%. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the 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 what my notice yeah. is, is high, so I'm almost forced to do Airbnb just to yeah. make, yeah, <laughs> just to make likes. sure, you're right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it that 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 Sorry, process. That was, yeah. But again, I documented everything. So um, when I went, because I actually just finished a project right across the street from it, so that one went a lot smoother. Um, I'm on month five with that one. So it's just I always tell people just document the process as much as you can because it's going it's going to make the process smoother. And then, like you had said, like try to, if you can if you're new to this because I think all of us we just have this mentality. Let's go. Fine, we'll happen. figure it out ourselves. Wow. But yeah. if you're new to this and you you like you have to find someone that's done this yeah. already because it's going to be hell. Yeah. Hell. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I think man. I mean, the most important thing you said. When you see side, I always say when you see sidewalks coming in the neighborhood, mm-hmm. there's a lot of development. I've always <laughs> that's the crazy. Why, like it, the city, mm-hmm. they've already approved certain bonds and mm-hmm. you know what yeah. I mean, construction to take place. Just like with the rail, like I took the information in the department that I was in, knowing that they were going to bring a rail to the Fillmore area. Yep. So I'm like, this is going to be the next. Yep. You know what I mean? And they still spot. they're still bringing and more rail. Still bringing yeah. it. So it's just like even yeah. when nobody believes in your vision, mm-hmm. like you still got to press. So you got crazy. Hundred percent. I got. When I first when I when I, I think I showed you the gym when I first got it on oh, yeah, Cleburne, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, people saw it and was like, "Why here?" Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, it's too do. much work. It's just that and the other, mm-hmm. right? But the crazy thing, and then I had people like, "Yo, why don't you just move to Pearland? You should mm-hmm. move it out that way." Or Fresno, you know, you live out that way. Different you know, because of the I guess the economy and then mm-hmm. how the type of people that stay out there, but not knowing, I'm looking like, man, this for the blow up over here in a minute. You know what I mean? And how I knew it was for the blow up, my lease at the time was, when I was leasing, was at a certain amount. Mm-hmm. The landlord went up five bands. Hmm. Shit. <laughs> I'm like, what? 
Now I'm thinking like, okay, I'm about to try to act like one of those right. overnight moves. But I'm like, I got too much shit in this gym to be talking about right, movies. Right. But I'm like, man, I got to figure something out, man. We got to get, we got to get some. I'm calling him. I'm like, yo, bro, we got to get some. We got to find some, some something. Yeah, we we, we, we set the beat up. The landlord, and you know, he already saw what was going on. Like he yeah. was already, he was him. The landlord was already mentally invested in what he could. Mm. Yeah. He didn't want to do nothing with the building at the time, but when he saw what he turned it into, yeah. all right, this is the price I want. Yesterday's mm -hmm. price is not today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean, so but I see one of those. You got to respect it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, me and my brothers was talking. He was like, man, he like, man, that's fucked up. Blah blah blah. I'm like, hey, it's business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to respect it. So like, if you do grab a property. And you know, you mm -hmm. see that the area is blowing up, and the landlord goes up before you try to buy or you before you purchase. Man, man, of action, man. please, man of action, <laughs> right? Put, put a owner finance, owner finance, yep. yeah. Yep. Like, yep. Even if you don't buy, have an option. Got an option, yeah. Least if you do do two or three years, you gotten the, the equity out of it. Right. Yep. Like you made the revenue off yep. of it. Say, if I want to walk away. I at least made my money back times right, right. ten. You want to? You don't want to sell it to me? Cool. I I got enough money now off tax go tax somewhere. returns to go ahead and buy my own or build my own. Right, yeah. right. And so it's just about being strategic, man, in this business in general. Just over time, the experiences that you have, and like you said, you you, you took some losses on some properties, but by the content, nobody would know that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They'd be like, man, he doing it. Like they'll look at us and be like, mm -hmm. man, they doing yeah. it. it look nice. The pre you know the yeah. presentation is good, but yeah. man. It took some 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 licks and bruises, you see right. what I'm saying, 100%. to get to a certain point of life where you're at right now. So, you know, I think that's the beauty of it. Even with all the guys, me knowing him, me knowing TJ, it's like I know just through personal conversation, like what we've all, you know what I mean, right. experienced. We've all experienced a bad landlord. We've all experienced a high-ass hard money loan, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like the, the famous, the famous Real talk. Yeah, right, Famous bro. Right. Right. Like for my like, crib, my man now. Yeah. When we refinance, like to get more money out of the the loan because we ended up having to change the, the design. Like we had to add more square footage. They went from eight point eight point five to twelve percent. So twelve percent on a million dollars <laughs> is mm. easy matter. That's twelve twelve thousand. We were paying twelve thousand a month for like like three four months. And I was like, we gotta get this shit finished up. So all the finishes in there are good, but now we're going back and you know making adjustments. You know what I mean? There's certain finishes, paint, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. You get in, in bed with those hard money lenders, especially if you have an asset. Mm -hmm. Oh, they want. Oh, they. Oh, they waiting on you to not make a payment of default. It's just. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy, man. But you know, that's a part it's of the game. It. So it's in this industry, you know. Now, I mean, social media is everything. So, what are you guys doing to promote your business? I mean, I see, I see what y'all do on Instagram, but like, do y'all go through ads and shoot ads out? Do y'all go newspaper route, uh, green sheet? You know, they got a green sheet here. You know what I mean? Uh, green sheet still, still <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. What route? I'm going to go on Marketplace. Marketplace. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. I've been on Marketplace. No cap. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I mean, yeah, other than, I mean, Instagram, y'all, y'all, all y'all content is dope. You know what I mean? We got to get my boy content. Up. <laughs> but, hey, we going to turn them up. But We know what the finished product you're, is. Yeah, we all. Now, nah, one thing about it, this guy got an eye. Yeah. Design, you go to one of his properties, you'd be like, yeah. oh, 100%. Shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Man took, man took a little, little time. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. We got it right. If we could just get him a cameraman to follow yeah. him, it's yeah, over. Man. He got yeah, everything I mean, else. I'm, I'm, I'm not a camera dude, and that's the, that's the thing. Like, y'all, so, I, I be, I admire the people that shoot the content. I'm like, man, I look good. Like, I, I would definitely, like, you know what I mean, have mm -hmm. my schematic, you know, set up like that, but I just don't have the, the energy it. and time yeah. to right. do it. Like, I am I going to really set up two cameras or one camera with a stand and, you know what I mean? I told you I got the click button. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Hold in like one on one. The ball, right? the ball fist the ball and all. Fist, like, yeah, I'm clicking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's but, hilarious. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody's probably to some capacity advertised through Instagram or Facebook or, you know what I mean? Of course, they're now the same as Meta, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody's kind of, you know, advertised, advertised through that, you know, particular outlet. But even Instagram and Facebook are getting greedy. Like, you know what I mean? They cut down your engagement. Yep. So, I mean, you got to really have a, a market, which is important for you guys when you're shooting content because you're engaging with people. Mm -hmm. So, now they really can tap into what you do as a person, yep. as a person, yeah. seeing what your post is. So, yeah. when they see you get on lives or see you, you know, do stories, they're engaging. They're engaging. And so, 
think that's the biggest thing for anybody. And for me, like for the property, I pretty much have a pretty decent network of people right. that they like the product. Whenever it's done, they're going to come by. So I haven't really had to, you know, do too much marketing. So that's a blessing. Yeah. That's a blessing. Right. right. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, yeah, go ahead. No, go no, ahead. I was going to ask. No, I mean, it's just, to to your point, I mean, it's about adding value, right? I think uh, a lot of people kind of misconstrue the way money flows uh, because the math with money is not to work more hours and make more money. In theory, if you work more hours and you get paid $20 an hour, you work more hours, will you make more money? Yes, but of course you'll be capped. It's about adding value to the marketplace. The marketplace is outside, social media, any people around you. And that's what we do on social media, which is adding value mm -hmm. to build credibility, build our brands, and... Um, and like like you said earlier, especially with the way Instagram is and these social media platforms are going right now, it's important that they want to see exactly what, not so much, it says one thing to just talk to the camera, but if they can actually see what you kind of do, yeah, sure. um, that's, that's incredibly, incredibly more value. That's a lot, what about a lot of our content shifting to. We want to bring them out to the field a lot more. We want to have more conversation, probably riding in the cars, things like that. Just So we're trying to switch things up too. Okay. So, no, yeah. And that's, that's important too. And so like when you take, that money that you make from real estate and you put it into another business. Yeah. That business may require a lot more content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This particular is my brand, PRD. <laughs> All right, public, Cam. Public one time for the one time. Public relations, public relations department. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you put that money, you're going you're gonna to have to create some form of content Eventually. to have people engaged. Right. And so if I'm not doing it in real estate, I'm going to, I'm gonna go ahead and you know turn yeah. it over ten times to another another business. I'm make sure I'm gonna get with y'all cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> see what's what. See what's what. Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, especially with this, obviously the biggest way right now is social media, whether it's through like Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, whatever the case is. Um, really, the biggest way, honestly, too, is again once you do provide that value, just try to figure out a way to capture those people so that you know biggest one is an email list, right? right? So you know once they're in the email list, these are people that really are rocking with you. So you do decide to you know promote you you know selling a course or selling something or having some kind of event. That's who you hit first. Those are going to be the people that try to buy from you the quickest versus right. always posting on social media. Now you're relying on boosting your post or running Facebook ads. I mean, I've heard um, recently, and I need I still need to test it out myself. Like running, you know, Facebook ads has obviously been kind of mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, trying Bing ads, like Bing, Bing, Bing. The, uh, like the, what you paying for Facebook is going to be lower with Bing because a lot of people, whatever. But people are still on Bing, mm -hmm. surprisingly. <laughs> So that's an, another thing I'm going I'm to test out too. But yeah, I think social media, just creating that value and then try to get your followers from all these social media platforms into your own mm -hmm. ecosystem. Mm -hmm. is, is really the best route to that go. network. 100%. Oh. To piggyback off of what you said also, it's like providing that value is huge and then the credibility. I think now a lot of people say they don't want to get on social media and post, but like it's credibility. Nowadays, like when you meet somebody, like for me, for sure, like if I meet somebody and he's saying he does all these things I and he to wants see. to get you know, locked in with me and we're going to do a project together. I got to see it. Like mm -hmm. I need to go to your page and be able to see what you have going on and like, and legitimize it through that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just kind of the times we're moving to. So credibility, providing the value. Mm -hmm. And then also, like you said, that community where you have people that are buying into what you are doing and what you're saying. And then they want to, cause let's say you want to go raise money or whatever it is, you know, you have a community of people that trust you and that are seeing what you're doing and they want to invest in you and whatever you have. A lot of people just try to, they'll ask you for something like, man, you need to come out with a course, you need to come, a shirt, something. I want to I want to put some money in your pocket. Right. Um, and so that happens a lot. And a lot of times just being authentic and just really showing, like he was saying, you know, your day to day, you headed to the, to the job site, just posting a video of what you do, your day in the life. And just so they can really see it because yeah, Instagram and social media, you can always fake things, right? right. But when you're doing it on a con consistent basis, it's like, how much can you really fake? You know, yeah. you can really be authentic and not to say people can't still do it, but you know, just providing value, building a community, and also just being authentic and yeah. uh, and, and providing. Yeah, I thought too, like I, I'm trying to see how we can get my audience more tapped into not even just the business side, even a peek into stuff outside of business too. So that's why I'm look, I'm thinking about getting going more into gym content. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I haven't really, I don't really post Lifestyle. gym content like that. And, and that's really what mine is, right? That's what yeah. mine is. So it's like, part of the daily What's crazy right. is, this, yeah. all right, so I'm heavy in the gym. Mm -hmm. So my my content is gym, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So now I'm trying to get and shoot my content like what y'all mm -hmm. doing, like my mm -hmm. flips lifestyle. Or, mm -hmm. or, you know, just the whole lifestyle yeah. thing of what I do, other my other, you know, uh, 
businesses and stuff like that. So that's that's crazy. Yeah, it's like part. reverse. I mean, it's reverse. <laughs> and it it nah. really benefits you too because yeah. Yeah. when people know exactly what you're doing, because like you said, like you would just think that you're on fitness, but they don't know about the trucks and the yeah. real estate and all the other things that you're involved in. Um, and so it's just really good to just show that. And like that's one thing I had to like realize when I started was just like showing because I, I got into it because one of my friends was like, man, you have when I was building my first business, he was like, bro, you got to show people what you're doing. Like, this is cool. And I just think it's boring. Like, I was just like, nobody wants to right. see this. But even just in the sense of you going and working out, headed to your job site and then coming back home and cooking a healthy meal. Yeah, they are interested in that. Like, they want to see that. Because that's, that's motivation. That's the, but that's motivation, motivation too, because yeah. it's like see, people say they don't have time. Yeah, like right, I right. see him. We at the gym five thirty in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. getting it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, saying? and, and, right, right, right. and he gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he flipping houses, making ho building hotels and all <laughs> types of stuff. Right. You know, yeah. so yeah, yeah. It's, it's relatable. It's you know, it, we got person. we got to be careful though because we want to be known for like a very few things, mm -hmm. right? We want to be in terms of how we make money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Now. We need to couple that with lifestyle things, mm -hmm. right? And then that's to me, I, I'm, that's the recipe I'm trying to get mm -hmm. to. I actually have other businesses that I'm doing. We have a bookkeeping firm. We're actually in the solar now, <laughs> things like that. But you likely want to actually catch me advertise either of those businesses. Honestly, I want my niche to be the rentpreneur, which, by the way, that's the brand, by the way, TM. <laughs> there we go. That's trademark, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but I want people to know, all right, TJ is a real estate, you know what right. I'm saying? Um, but I want them to also see the other side of TJ. But I just think it's very, very important to be careful because when people know that you that you are champion, that you champion something, mm -hmm. then then you're a lot more credible that way, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, sure. sure. I'm 100%. I had to niche it down because, I mean, it had got to a point, you know, you could ask 10 different people, what do I do? I'll, you, they'll get 10 different people. <laughs> <answers, right? laughs> and then nice. I just had to be like, all right, let me get to a point where it's niche down. Like, all right, if you can talk about my dude, like, Let's just say this he's a lender at this point, or you know, mm. he's like in real estate. That way I could just niche it down. Yeah. You know, I so lender real estate is a sweet pair though. Right. Sweet right. pair. Goes but then, then now, after a while to start some to some people when they hear it, it's like, okay, everybody in real estate. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then you don't want to be a part of that crowd that everybody's telling you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you wanna <laughs> but you don't want them to be, you know what I mean, in your business to where yeah. you're where it's intrusive. So it's just like I'm a serial entrepreneur. We're like, oh, what all do you do? Yeah. It's your entrepreneur. Well, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Not yeah. make money yeah. what makes sense. Because mm. people say they're making money and you can still, like I said, operate and create yeah. every time you're making money. Yeah. But that's important, man. It's just like, what am I really doing, you know what I mean, on my day to day? You know, you letting people into your life is, you got to be real yeah. open because that's a vulnerable moment. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. People really think they know you off of what they see, yeah. which is, it could be good. That shit's scary. Mm -hmm. You go somewhere, oh, country. how is yeah. out the country multiple times and people recognize. Uh, yeah, right. it's, it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> when people, like, when people, it's funny, like when I put my son on Instagram, they like, Oh, look at Parker. You don't know Parker. What? Like, look at my son. You know what I mean? They be like, leave Parker alone. Bro, I done been out. I done been, I done been out. Oh, how's Caden? Yeah. Like, yeah. what? What? Yeah. Man, yeah. let me take this down. <laughs> yeah, 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 His birthday was yesterday, right? right. What? Right. Really, really, that's the aspect I'm protecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, a lot of people are like, why are you on post? Got to protect. Family out. And, like, that's Man. a private time. Yeah. Like, I don't live. Yeah. For me, I don't live on social media. I live in the moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, depending on what it is you're doing, yeah, it's it's required. But for me, I live in the moment. I long When Instagram came out, what, 2011, 2012? Mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah. I remember I ran up the following to like maybe 18, 19,000, right? After the page got deleted, I'm like, man, this shit. <laughs> I'm not I'm not spending time trying to get people to follow me. You see what I'm saying? Like if I'm not providing anything right, right, that's right. gonna be beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. like, I just wanna keep a simple lifestyle, be cool, get to the bag, make sure my family is good and keep it moving. If there's something I'm trying to promote, then yeah, then we'll figure out how to how to incorporate that into my mm -hmm. day to day. But yeah, you just gotta be careful with that, man. What you post and what you put and like you said earlier, it's like you wanna let people in and see if they want to collab with you. But you got a lot of people that post uh, videos of people houses that they don't, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we did X, Y, Z. Yeah, I'm about to do your house. I'm <laughs> right out there, yo. So yeah, I just finished doing this out here. <laughs> and it's so but easy. You know, she come outside, I'm like, so yeah, easy. that's my tenant. <laughs> right, but, I, but I let the home, like sometimes I let the homies do that. I let them, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah let it shine on yeah. It's cool, like we rock like that. Like, yeah. I don't have a problem with you doing that to shoot. You gotta watch with you. Know? Gotta watch yeah. the pool, you see yeah. what I'm saying? And I think there's just a balance too, because like you said, like when you're showing so much of your life and your mm -hmm. business, and like you said, you go out and people will recognize you. So like 
you really have to find that balance of like showing everything, but also keeping your life private in some areas mm -hmm. because it's a tough balance. Yeah. You, it's a tough balance, and you just really have to find it because you're gonna get noticed, and depending on what you throw out there, it could get personal, and you just gotta gotta you know find and maneuver through it. They come to the crib and be like, "You look familiar," <laughs> and I'm like, "Do I look familiar because you really saw me online, or do I look familiar because of how I'm living?" You see, what I'm saying right. people will deliver Amazon, they'll try to. Yeah, I need to bring the package and you could drop it right there. Right there at the <laughs> gate. You don't gotta come in. I remember right. Amazon, we were finishing up the property, the house. A person walked in, it was a first day, they walked in the house to deliver a package. I'm like, I'm looking at my you people like, what's I, I did that. <laughs> One time when uh, I think that builders were there, you but wasn't I told, there. I told you to come. That's the I drove. <laughs> I'm driving up. I'm like, right inside. Yeah, bro, do it right. <laughs> I didn't walk my son with me. Like, Dad, we, who house is this? I was like, it's my homeboy house. You good? Come on, let's go. We walked. Through. When he called, he called me. He was like, Hey, I'm at the house. I'm like, We at the house. I'm looking on the camera. I'm like, You good? You good? But the gate wasn't on in. So yeah, yeah, just, it wasn't no you gate. Just pull in. So yeah. ain't no. You just not pulling up. Yeah. Just hit me on the call. Box. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's real Hollywood major going on. <laughs> so, with that being said, so when is the uh, collab, man? What y'all trying to do? What y'all trying to do? We, we, gotta, we, we gotta just do it. Have to make man. something happen. Yeah, sure. we just gotta, we just gotta, hotel. it's gotta be a, it's gotta be a big, you know, a de decent deal make where we all can eat. Make, 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 make it make sense. Make it make sense. I got a, hey, I got deals now. I know right. I'm gonna say the same thing. I mean, I good ones, deals, good man. ones. Commercial. Talking yeah. about hotels that yeah. we that we're raising capital for right now. I got a lot right now over off of capital by LBJ. It's a 12,000 12, square foot lot adjacent to it. It's another twelve thousand square foot lot. So you got about half an acre. I was already doing some kind of design and sketches. You put about ten townhomes on it. Mm. I mean, it's super tough. Like a super tough. It's quiet over there. It has mature trees. So I was just thinking. I'm like. Even if I don't take it, like it's an opportunity mm. for somebody to take on. I'm always that's a, <laughs> ten, ten ain't probably. Ain't gonna lie, ten service on there go. Hey, this, that, that <laughs> ten ain't up just yeah, off the yeah, excavation. Yeah, man, the, the project is gonna probably cost like two point six. Yeah, yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yield gross should probably cost like three. I'm gonna hit you for twenty just to clear the land. You like, hey kid, how much you gonna charge? Right, he's a dub. 20, <laughs> a dub. Uh, man, a tree fell over. The storm. <laughs> I just need, I just need you to go. A dub. Go but yeah, nah. But that's what's a lot up. of deals. I mean, a lot of deals. You just gotta look at the market. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta see who's really spending that type of money right mm -hmm. now. Like certain houses that you build. Like you were talking, like TJ was talking about. Like he did the property over in was it Bel Air? Yeah. Bel Air is like. There's only a small percentage of people that buy at that level. Yeah. So your product has to be. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it has, like we talk about, people mm -hmm. say, bring your pickiest buyer. Your your property has to be that property that they go look for. In that yeah, area. they pick keep. They, right, right, right. Pick so if you got something in between 275, 375, you're going to get a bigger pool of, of buyers. Mm -hmm. But with the rates being so high, you know, there's a lender. It's like you got people that got. 700 plus credit scores mm -hmm. make good income they getting approved for like what 200 mm -hmm. ain't price. no houses for two like that yeah, not, what they not want. at all not what they want at all everybody want 350 yep. and up yep mm -hmm. right, right. So, yeah, one, of, one of my students just bought it just closed on a property no interest well, hmm? huh? no interest he bought it he bought a property owner finance no interest well i mean here's the thing like our school system i think society our school system teaches is that in order for you to own a home especially growing up in order for you to own a home, you need a bank. You need a mortgage. You gotta have a mortgage. And and I mean, honestly, it's just it's not necessarily true. And banks are amazing. Um, that we we love them, we leverage them, but they're actually winners as well. Oh, <laughs> With every single one of these deals. They're the they're the real winners. Yeah, sure. Um I'll give you I'll give you an example. If you used to buy a house right now for five hundred thousand dollars at six point five percent interest, your mortgage would probably be right under three thousand dollars. Let's just call it three thousand dollars a month. Um and by the time you've paid it off in 30 years, that you would have paid about 1.5 million on a $500,000 house. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to approach that same seller and you say, you know what, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'll give you $600,000 for your house, 600,000, a whole 100K more, but I'll give you $2,500 a month until it's paid off. Did you know that house gets paid off 10 years sooner? Mm -hmm. Not only that, how much did you pay for it? 600,000, not 1.4 million, right. right? So what we got to look at with these real estate deals, when we leverage banks, um, is that we, 
they're the real winners. It's because of interest, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And so, but he's just, for example, he just closed his deal. No, the, the seller owns the property free and clear. Now, you can't do a deal like this if it's not free and clear. Right, right. If there's already debt on it, it doesn't work. You have to satisfy that debt. So because it's free and clear, we just said, hey, what are you asking for? They wanted 90000 for the property. And we shot, we shot them two offers. We shot them an offer for sixty seven because that's what we needed it for to make it work with a hard money loan. Or we shot them an offer for ninety five with with no banks, interest uh, principal only payments to you directly with no banks involved. And they act. The seller was like, "Well, why is, did I read this right? You give me a little bit more, like even more than I'm asking." I said, "Well, if I were to." If I were to go get a bank loan for this property, I'm going to have to pay for this property three times over because of interest. So instead of giving the bank the money, how about I give it to you instead? All right, thanks. That was the pitch to the seller. Yeah. And and they were like, it makes a lot of sense, right? So, you know, it's, it's a different kind of, when it comes to real estate, especially with interest rates the way they are right now, you kind of got to know these things. Yeah. If mortgages were never created, which by the way, mortgage, the root word for mortgage is morgue. Like literally, it's called a death note. They want you paying on it until you die, <laughs> right? That's what it's for. <laughs> so if mortgages were never created, how do you think we'll be doing real estate? Right. If Greg uh, uh, bought a property from you and maybe he put down a down payment with you and he, he's making, he's giving you monthly payments because he just put down a down payment with you. Say, I want to buy that property from Greg. Okay, how about I buy it from you? Okay, well, I'm making payments to Kent. All right, how about I just take over that note yeah. and I give you the difference? Just take it over, right? right? You, or I just, or, bank or we we'll just do a wraparound mortgage on it. Right. So or I can just I give you a down payment and I start making you pay like there's okay. that's how we would be doing real estate without mortgages. So it's interesting now it's considered creative financing yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. banks are involved. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. But in reality, um, you know, you you don't necessarily now banks are great. Banks are great. But in reality, man, you got to really understand when you understand how interest works. They really know who the real one is. Right, right, right. Well, good. Another thing, too, that you can do is that if you own a financial property, you can add it to your balance sheet. Yeah. I mean, you can add it to your balance sheet and your, your PFS. And so once they go pull it up, they're not going to show debt on there. But if they do look it up with the tax record, it's going to show this in your name. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people don't even, when you don't go through that, you just do the untraditional process. Yeah. You're just doing own the finance and having your own pay. When mm -hmm. you got it's best to go through the title company. Yeah, hundred percent. The company let them put the deed of trust on record. So when they go look at that, mm -hmm. oh, he does have an asset. You don't have to disclose to them that this house cost me X, Y, Z. So pull it. And if you can't pull it, that's on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's ways, like you said, creative finance and get around it. And that's what I'm looking at more in terms of like if I'm buying property. I'm just strictly on the finance. Man. Yeah, so so let's, finance. let's do yeah. one. Let's do one with your house. Let me buy your house. <laughs> that's the creative hey, finance. Yeah, it's funny you said that, but I mean, when I looked at the amortization schedule mm -hmm. on 1.3, after it's paid off, the bank would have made almost four million. Bro. Crazy. That's crazy. Crazy yeah. work. Four million. Yeah. Do nothing. yeah. Crazy they work, and they do nothing, and they do collect. <laughs> that's it, right? <laughs> and you mess up, they take it and redo it. Right. Hundred percent. Right. Hundred right. percent. Right. So like we, we got like a million in equity, like a million one or something in equity on the crib. So I'm just talking to my wife, like, yo, like, how can we figure out how to mm -hmm. double down on these principal payments? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when the market does get back to a position where you know, the interest rate, we got like five and a half, even in the bad. Oh, that's good. You know what I mean? We got that's real good. And a half on the private side. So it's like, once the rate goes down, I don't think it'll go to the twos anymore. Mm -hmm. But even if it said three, eight, three, Man. nine, we finance it. Dump, for, dump. Oh, yeah. Or just dumping it. Oh, right yeah. Right now, it's, it's, and I'll be transparent. 70, the, the the payments, principal and interest is 7500 mm -hmm. All right. Principal and interest. Principal is about 2000 Interest is. Five thousand. Look at that, man. Five thousand, bro. <laughs> interest. So when I look at my, when I'm online and I'm looking at the notes, like, <laughs> I, I got to, drop. I gotta, it. Yeah, I got to start moving the numbers. <laughs> yeah, different. Right. At all. Uh, yeah. Like how much? I, how many payments I put down? Yeah, bro. Man. Still ain't moving. Yeah, but yeah, we love banks though. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, my, guy, yeah, my guy's yeah, a lender, so. You know what I'm saying? So, but we you'd probably it, be able to set up set up a, a deal like that though with somebody. Yeah. Like, yeah. So let's say if I want to buy it from him and we ain't want to go through the bank, you can probably be able to set that yeah, up. Yeah, 100%. And by the way, I don't care how, what kind of creative deal you, I don't care if it's on a finance up to, lease option, whatever the case may be, close it at a title company, like he said. Okay, still, sure. put a title, still put title work, yeah. close it at a title company, no matter how you do it.
Yeah, you, you avoid the, the clouded title situation. 100%. You know what I mean? So if you do want to refinance it, when you do build a structure on there, mm-hmm. even if you're using out-of-pocket, you know, cash, then you're not held up by somebody clouding the title. Mm-hmm. We talk about clouding title, boy. These yeah. randoms going crazy. Mm-hmm. These boys mem- memo in these properties. Yeah. Like, yeah. crazy. So you got to make sure when you're doing deals, too, like if somebody gives you a wholesale deal, Make sure that the memorandum, the memorandum is. I'm calling you, bro. <laughs> you're right, you're right. But look, man, we can talk all day about this. I know we yeah, can go yeah, yeah, all yeah, yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. Might have to do a part two. Yeah. But uh, from TJ, uh, let them know how they can find you on social yeah. media, your platform. Man, listen, tap in with me at TJ to Johnny. That's TJ, T-I-J-A-N-I. Pretty much it. Cam? You can tap in with me at Cam Jackson, CEO on all platforms. You can tap in with me at Greg T. The Builder on Instagram. And then uh, Money Madu on all platforms. All right, bet, bet, bet. So you can follow us on YouTube. You can subscribe to our page, The Muscle Hustle yeah. Podcast. Y'all already know. Hit the button down. Hit the button. Button. hit the button. Hit the button. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Subscribe. Subscribe. You know, hit the button down below. Right now. Like and subscribe. Yeah. And also, like and subscribe. <laughs> on June 13th, we have our one-year anniversary hey, at I Tribeca. Um, Emancipation. Patient. Yeah. I don't know the address, but. Yeah. Go down to our uh, yeah. click the button down below. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You will know. Two, two, yeah. Two, two, yeah. Emancipation. Yeah, yeah. emancipation. Yeah, yeah. But hey, it's I gonna be two events, a, yeah. it's gonna be a treat, man. So I like to see all you guys out, sure, man, sure. and um, like all our followers and subscribers. Please come out and support. All right, Love man. You. Great having you guys. It was likewise, a pleasure. Man. Likewise, you great. know, Coco left me on this one. She had me. This is my first one. So uh, <laughs> hey. You did Peace good, out. Yeah, you, you did good. good. <laughs> Round of applause for my guy, Kim. <laughs>